Hey there, everybody in Slice of Prusa Edition land. This is Chris, back again with another tips and tricks and crazy things you can do in Slicer. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that's extremely powerful, something that people have requested. Some people said, man, I really wish this existed in Slicer. Well, it does. It does. I know. Now, it actually exists not only in Slicer, but also in Cura. Um, I, I apologize for all the Simplify 3D users. This is not an option in Simplify 3D. Um, there's probably something like it. But this particular thing is not here. And this basically is project files. Um, they're called 3MF files. So if we head over here to the platter and we take a look and it says export plate as 3MF. Um, 3MF is basically a standard that was created for um, additive manufacturing and stuff like this where everything that you do on the platter, settings, the manipulations that you've done to the objects and so on and so forth can be saved as an entire uh, project. That way you can go back to the project and manipulate it slightly and export it again. And then you have these little iterative changes. And then once you finalize it and make sure it's perfect, you can save a final 3MF and you are good to go to repeat the same thing over and over again. And if anything changes, like you just want to grow the object a little bit or do this and that, it will all stay. So the perk of this, the, the majesty of this is, um, it, let's say you're doing... Um, you're trying to, like me, I make a lot of profiles. I've slowly switched over to 3MF files where I can get an object, a test object, a Benchy, a cute Octo, or whatever that I like to print with Buddy the Dog. Um, and I'll do some changes and I'll print and I'll come back to that 3MF file, Ch do some changes, print, you know, make a new version of that. So I'll do like a version one, version two, or however I want to do the versioning at the day, you know, maybe letters, version F version G. Um, and then once I find a setting that worked the best or a combination of settings that works the best, I just go back and be like, okay, this is the one that I liked. Save those settings. Instead of making a bunch of iterative profiles over here in the profile section, um, this is also powerful for people who do things with a lot of custom supports because it saves where the custom supports were. So if something was heavy handed or you forgot a spot, you can go right back to where you were not have to redo all the work that you just did and then produce the exact same print with the ch small changes to that or massive changes depending on how many sports you want to do but also it works great for multi-material prints where you do all the work um, picking the colors that you want and setting up the uh, model exactly the way you want it and so on and so forth and then all of a sudden you're like oh man um i'm kind of stuck here what do i do i really wish um i could go back and change one little thing because i put the wrong color in the wrong spot and so on and so far. So let's walk through this. This is probably easier <laughs> to walk you through than talk about it, but those are the main points. This is actually something that um, a lot of you are going to be like, wow, why haven't I been doing this? Chris, why didn't you tell me about this? Prusa, why, why didn't you say anything about this? Well, as per usual, um, things take time. So we're going to start off here. Uh, I already did something magical here. Um, we've already set up a multi-material print. I'm going to print uh, a print by Vedran. He did a multicolor uh, Jason Voorhees. So in my MMU2 prints, actually, I think it's right on the desktop. There it is. Everything here. So this is the Jason that he made. And let's load that in here. And it's going to be like, oh, man, is it a multi-part object? Yes, it is. And there's our, there's our ill-colored, crazy Jason Voorhees that's laying on the bed on his back, which is pretty unprintable. So let's go ahead and... Click on them, click face, and boom, there we go. We're there, but man, look at those colors. Those are wrong. Those are the wrong tool heads. I do have the correct colors. I do want brown for the shoes, and I want this dark gray for his suit, his jumpsuit. Um, the lighter silver, lighter gray for the uh, for the blade, brown for the eyes, white for the mask, etc. Upon etc. As you can see, it's kind of a mishmash. It's wrong. So I can double click Jason and go right here and. I'm clicking things okay. Click on the mask. I know white, I believe, is four. Yep, white is four. We'll make the shoes brown, which is five. And, yep, I'm doing all this. I'm doing all this work. And this is work. This is things that you guys, you know, you're sitting there going like, man, I've already done this once or twice or multiple times, and now I'm doing it all over again. Well, check out this magical stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and exit. I'm going to clear this. So you're like, wait, Chris, you already started. Why are you clearing it? Simple. Um, I've already created the first step in this which is, there it is, step one. I've already created 
oh, it's trying to open up Makura, and it will open. Uh, it'll open the object, but it's not going to save my settings. So as you can see, this is a universal uh, file format. There's my JSON already standing up correctly. Sorry, Ultimaker, that doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to open it over here in uh, Slicer, and um, there it is. I've already, already done the work putting him on the bed and doing all that work and uh, flipping him correctly, but he's still not colored correctly. Well, psh, don't worry, I made sure to save another one of those because there's a step two here. Step two, I already did all the magic. I already set all the colors, already aligned them properly, and did all that magic, but as you can see, I could do something like this. I could go ahead and be like, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go ahead and slice this now and take a look, and then I'm going to complain because it's going to use way too many supports uh, in this final. Yep, it's going to use way too many supports. Um, and I, man, I really wish I would just do this with... Um, you know, something like uh, the custom supports in Slicer. Well, hey, good news, guys. I've already done that work behind the scenes. So I delete all this, and I head to step three here, which is adding the custom supports. And again, these are just iterates. I've just saved out three MFs as I've been working. And as you can see, I've already added um, the custom supports, and I'm happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and slice that now, go to the preview. I'm going to take a look at what happens. And boom, look at that. Way less supports. I'm just getting the ears. Just getting the, the blade in the hand and just underneath his, um, yep. And there you go. I mean, this is the magic of the 3MF file. It's already there. And what's cool is I can add to this. I can add other 3MF files to this. So on the desktop right now, so let's go to File, Open. I just finished another veteran piece, so desktop. And I have a little dragon that I did. Um, and I redid it twice because I did way too many supports for it. Boom. So I did a veteran dragon. Sorry, I know veteran. You're going to be like, that doesn't need supports. It'll print. Man, it looks so much better with supports. And I'm one of those guys that's like, man, that's just going to fall over. So um, I added supports. Now, I know this doesn't look like a multi-material print anymore. But if we just go back here and we go back to our, um, let's see here. Where's my pretty MMU2? There it is. Uh, pretty MMU2 PLA. Oh, wrong one. MMU2 Chris. There it is. And let's go ahead and go to 1.3. And 1.3. And 1.3. Is that the right one? Did I pick the right one there? Maybe it's this one. Yep, there we go. TLA 1.3. And 1.3, 1.3. 1.3 and 1.3. So, uh, change this thing back to this. And of course, the colors are incorrect, but it does remember the place that I did everything in. Um, let's make sure I didn't pick a different one. Pretty MMU2. Oh, there we go. That's the correct setting. So, as you can see, it even stored all that fancy stuff that I was doing. And I can be like, double click you, and I want this to be, I don't know, let's do a, <laughs> let's do a light gray dragon here. There we go. And slice now. And as you see, I already had some custom supports I made on there. And it's slicing. We'll go to the preview. Wait for it to all do the magic. You can do it, buddy. There we go. So now you can see I've got a little bit of support there. I got my custom supports on Jason Voorhees here. And overall, this is awesome. I was able to um, import different 3MFs that already had features done to them. I already had the uh, custom supports built on the little dragon by Veteran. And now I have a completely finished Jason Voorhees with all the colors and all that fun stuff. So I just got to make sure you select the right profile. Um, <laughs> I unfortunately forgot which one was the correct one. Uh, but it does store all those settings so that way you can go back and you know do more things and as an added bonus if you just select him and make another one more you know you can make more Jason Voorhees and slice now and go to preview and there we go look at that you now have a little dragon and three Jasons and all the work was already done for you I didn't have to go in here and, and painstakingly spend the 15 minutes uh, on one single JSON, because I already did that. I already did it once, and you don't have to do it again. And then, of course, I can save this platter um, as a 3MF, so I can be like, 
oh man, you know how often I print uh, a five color um, and a five color Jason and a dragon one color. Uh, do that all the time. But now it's done. Uh, I can save that. I can export the G code now. And of course, I need to rename it correctly. But yeah, I mean, I'm good to go. I've already done all the work. Um, I can delete all this and, um, of course, hit the arrange button. I can delete all this. I can quit Slicer. I can reopen Slicer. Just just to show you that it doesn't go away. Uh, but I can open that exact 3MF I've been working on, which was in my download. Nope. Those are my documents. Is it MMU2? That's easier here. I've got it over here. MMU2 prints. Boom. And then I go to my JSON right here. And I go to this one that has the dragon and JSON. Oh, I double clicked to Fakura. Guys, don't do the double clicking if you have Kura installed because it's going to steal your 3MF files. <laughs> Quit Kura. Go back here. Load the dragon combo with Jason Voorhees right here. And there it is. Exactly the way we did it. We don't have to save the G code make a mistake, freak out, and then redo all of the hard work that we've already done. It was nice as uh, a lot of the guys who do multi-material, uh, uh, they'll do all the, uh, the, all the breaking down of the parts. You can actually, uh, let me go to it, uh, guys like Roman, uh, he already does that. So if you go to, see, so, yep, his Gary the Snail, he's already 3MF'd it for us, and it's already set up to be a five-color snail. So he's already done the hard work for us, already set up, and you can do that. I mean, he's done a lot of work in making sure everything's all pretty and, and, and beautiful. So um, that is your tutorial on 3MFs, basically project files. So uh, word of warning, if you have Cur install, it will try to steal your 3MFs. I might have to set it to only open in Slicer because I don't I don't really use Cur anymore. But uh, I hope this uh, saves you millions and millions of painstaking hours that you put into doing custom supports and multi-material prints or combinations of that and the fact you can add them in together is awesome because i'm going to go ahead and and open and i'm going to add a, a JSON right now it's already done so um oh wait i don't have to do it this way i already got it right here i can go right to JSON and steal my step three because that step three is already done with all the fancy stuff boom good to go look at that so um yeah, if you if you want a way to manage your profile or manage your your platter and come back to small little projects and save the project out the way you've you've actually edited it and manipulated it and all that fun stuff. I mean, this this is the best way of doing that. And if this isn't in other programs, I I, I apologize. All programs should have this. It is a completely open system, free for developers. Uh, check it out. Check out the 3MF project. Um, it's pretty sweet. Thank you, Prusa, for throwing that in there. Because, um, man, sure to save a lot of time slicing and manipulating things and getting it the way exactly the way you want it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, man. Now I have to go back and redo it all again. So, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed that longer than normal tutorial with a few mistakes in there. I do record these in one shot and those mistakes stay. So... Um, hope you got a good giggle out of me making a couple mistakes. So have a good one. Enjoy. I'll be back for more 3D printing tips and tricks that have to do with Slicer Prusa edition in the very near future.